Hello everybody, you're very welcome to this episode of Programming and Algorithms. In this episode we're going to look at probably what is one of our most advanced sorting algorithms and it's called QuickSort. Now QuickSort was developed by Tony Hoare in 1959 and it's still extremely commonly used in most operating systems, in games, in accounting packages, all around the world really you see QuickSort being implemented. So just so we know who Tony Hoare is, Charles Anthony Richard Hoare, either C.A.R. Hoare or Tony Hoare is considered one of the most important computer scientists in terms of his contribution to formal computation. He developed QuickSort and QuickSelect for finding an element in an array, Hoare logic and CSP and things like that, concurrent programming issues. So he's highly, highly respected and very well, well regarded within the computer science community. His technique is interesting. You pick a value, usually the first element of the array, and then you have a pointer on the left and right of the rest of the array and you move the pointer on the left along until you find an element that is larger than the value, the first element of the array and you move the right pointer across until you find a value that's smaller and then you swap those two values. Once you finish that swap you keep moving the pointers to, to, together to each other and if you find the same thing again, a value larger and smaller, you swap those. Keep doing that until the meet each other in the middle. We call the random value the pivot point that the swaps are around. Let's look at an example. Here's our array again. So let's pick our pivot as being 44, the first element of the array. Just to note, just because we picked the first element doesn't mean that'll be the smallest element. In fact, it almost certainly won't be the smallest element. So we randomly pick the first value. Its value is 44. It's kind of towards the middle of the array. Then we have two pointers left and right and we use the left value and keep moving it across until we find a value that's bigger than our pivot value and we keep moving the right array across until we right pointer across until we find a value that's smaller than our pivot point. So we take left and keep moving it across and we keep moving it until we find a value that's bigger than our pivot and it's 54 and then for our right array, we keep moving it until we find a value that's smaller than our pivot, which in this case, it's straight away number 18 is smaller than 54. So we swap these two values around. And then we move our left and right pointer together again. And this is the fun bit about quicksort. The point it reaches will be the correct position for our pivot 44. So we know that the number 34 can be swapped with 44 and now the number 44 is in its correct position. Indeed, 54 and 44 are in their correct position in fact, but that's, that's not always the case. Our pivot value is in its correct position, so then we say every element less than the pivot value, let's treat that as a subarray and every value greater than our pivot value, let's treat that as a separate subarray. So we have one subarray that's 34, 23, 42, 33, 16, and 18. And we have another subarray that simply consists of 54. The subarray that consists of 54 is already sorted and it's in its correct position. So we just need to concern ourselves with the other subarray. How do we do a quick sort? We pick our pivot value, the first element, 34, have a left and right pointer pointing at 23 and 18, we keep moving our left pointer across until we find a value bigger than 34. We found it, it's 42. And then we keep moving our right pointer across until we find a value less than 34. And we found it again, it's 18. What do we do then? We swap those two values. Then we move our left pointer forward and our right pointer back until one of two things happen, either we reach find a value in terms of the left that's greater than or we reach the, the right pointer. When we reach the right pointer, we move the right pointer back one and then we found the correct position of 34, our pivot point. So now we've got two arrays again that we need to sort, a subarray that consists of all the values less than the pivot and a subarray that consists of all of the values greater than the pivot. As was the case in our first example, the subarray that's greater than the pivot is actually sorted already. So that means we can treat those two values as being sorted and then we've just a, a, a subarray to deal with. 
we pick our pivot at random at the number 16. I'm going to skip a little bit here and just say that there's no need to actually do the left array, right or right, left right pointer, right pointer here because we know that the number 16 is in its correct position because it's the smallest value in the array. So no point doing that exercise. And then we've got a subarray that consists of 23, 18, and 33. We pick our pivot as being 23. Then we have our left and right pointer. We hit, we join, we, they meet at number 18, so then we swap 18 and 23. And then that array is sorted. That array is sorted, and in fact the whole array is sorted. So this is a real divide and conquer. We find it, to pick a number at random that's our pivot, sort the value, find value, a value that's bigger than it on the left and smaller than it on the right, swap them, keep moving the pointers around until they meet. When they meet, swap the point that they meet with the pivot because that's the correct position of the pivot. Keep redoing that with each subarray and then we'll have the whole thing sorted. So here's our code. Our main program takes in three values. It takes in the array and it takes our first and last position of the array. So the the pointers that de demarcate the, the, the particular subarray we're considering. So then as long as first is bigger than last, we calculate our pivot by calling another module called partition that takes in array first and last. And then whatever value we get for pivot, we quick sort the array from first to pivot minus one and from array pivot plus one to last. So that's us partitioning the array off into two subarrays. Sub, subarray one, the partition point, which is the pivot, and subarray two. So let's look at how partition works. Partition says, randomly select a pivot. In this case, pivot val is just assigned the first value in the array, exactly as we saw in the example. Because the array isn't sorted, that value will be at probably not the smallest value in the array. So if it's a middle value in the array, we have our left pointer that we want to take, which is looking for a value bigger than the pivot, and our right pointer, which we want to take, looking for a value smaller than our pivot. We also have a Boolean variable called false that we're going to set, a Boolean variable called finish that we're going to set to false. And while finished isn't true, we're going to have two loops. Our left loop is going to keep on moving across until we find a value that's bigger than the pivot value and our right pointer is moving the other way that's being decremented and we're going to keep moving across until we find a value that's smaller than the pivot value. When we do that we're going to swap the, the value that is in the left pointer with the value that's in the right pointer. And then finally what we're going to do is put the pivot in its correct position by swapping the first element of the array, which is the pivot element, with whatever the right pointer is pointing to. It can be either the right pointer or the left pointer, they'll probably both be pointing to the same value, so we swap them. And then we return the right pointer back, so that's our partition. It says, keep moving to the left and to the right. If we find a value that's bigger than the pivot, in the left pointer and a value that's smaller than the pivot in the right value, swap them around. Keep doing that until the pointers meet each other, then wherever they meet will be the correct position that the pivot should be in, so swap that with the pivot. Keep doing this recursively, and this is the important point, because we're doing it recursively, we break down the array into subarrays, and then it's all sorted. So that is the code for quicksort. It is well worth studying a great deal to get a handle on. In terms of its complexity, best case scenario is order n log n, average is order n log n, and worst case scenario is order n squared. Because its average complexity is n log n, it is the most commonly used sorting algorithm. It's well worth looking at an implementation of it, putting print statements in and understanding fully what's going on because it's a fiddly little algorithm, but it's extremely effective. So thanks very much. We've looked at insertion sort, shell sort, merge sort, and quick sort now, and we'll see you on the next episode.